next talk is by Iñaki and Augustine on Salsa CI. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, hello, everyone. Hi. Um, well, just straight to the question. Uh, how, long, how long does it take you to realize that you uh, have uploaded a broken package to the archive? Yeah, too long? Yeah, maybe minutes. <laughs> if you get rejected for FPT master checks, like, uh, I don't know, you are, yeah, you are uploading with the wrong distribution, with the, I don't know, whatever, the FPT master checks, but probably it's not a good idea to get rejected for that, but yeah, you get feedback faster. Maybe hours. Uh, it depends if you uploaded the package right before the, the scripts ran and installed the, your package into the archive and everything, the magic behind the Debian walls happened. And usually, yeah, it takes one day, more or less, it depends of your package, of course. Um, yeah, <laughs> uh, the Debian infrastructure, we, we, we think that the Debian infrastructure is really great, it's really awesome, but uh, first you need to upload your package and, and tag your package and tag your changes uh, and then to get, I don't know, some feedback from the changes that you did. Uh, the problem is that you, as Debian developer, you have to change the context to another package or maybe to your real life, whatever. And switching context is something expensive. Uh, and also, you have to, to have your own setup in your machine or your own infrastructure to test your package, to build your package. And just if you get some contribution, you have to take the patch, apply the patch on your machine, test it, and then uh, do the upload to, to get the feedback from the, from the Debian infrastructure. Um, well, just in my, in my case, when I started in Debian, my first packages, uh, before I uploaded, I don't know, I ran like a ton of tests. Like, uh, okay, I, am I remember my first package was uh, a s uh, flight simulator. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't know why, but <laughs> just don't ask. Uh, the, uh, I remember that in, in my first releases, I, I went to the package, installed my machine, and just played with the flight simulator a little bit. So, yeah, it works, then upload it. But then, I don't know, after three, four releases, I stopped doing that, so uh, because it is a repetitive task, so you you don't do that for every package that you build, uh, and and over time I, I started maintaining like a maybe more than twenty packages, so you cannot do that with all your packages all the time. So uh, just let me change. My notes, yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, the idea is uh, to, well, I, I want to feel that every time that, that I spend time for Debian, I want to make it worth it. I, I want to deliver some value to Debian. So, uh, yeah, I, I don't want to, to wait for the, for the other day to get the feedback, I want to, I don't know, feel like, uh, okay, I, I did something for Debian and I can just go to do something else. But uh, I stopped uh, working on Debian and I did, and I re realized that I, I added value to, to my contribution. So, yeah, I think that. Well, we take the, the continuous integration from the internet, actually the GitLab page, they have a really good definition there. Uh, continuous integration is the practice of building and testing each change automatically as early as possible. So yeah, it's a definition, just we put there to 
see if, uh, I don't know, in the beginning, we started uh, in our former company, like uh, the, uh, it was really small. Uh, we were like uh, 20 people. Um, I was in charge to build the operating system. Uh, they are uh, satellites. So I was building the operating system for the satellites. And every time that someone needs to do a release, I was building the, the root file system on my machine. So <laughs> it was totally chaotic. Uh, the company started growing and growing. And in the beginning, we were 20 people. And then one year later, we were like uh, 100 or so. I don't remember. And yeah, uh, I, I did all the tests before the satellite launch. And it was awesome for the first satellite. But uh, then we started sending more satellites. And it wasn't fun. And the responsibility, it, it was really too much for me. And uh, the contributions or, or the workflow between developers was really hard. I mean, uh, I was in the middle. I was the, the man in the middle of the operating system and the releases. So uh, like, uh, we didn't know what uh, continuous integration means in that time. So that was the idea why we put the, the slide there. Uh, and yeah, when we changed the, the model of, of the satellite, we added like uh, many boards in the satellite. In the beginning, we, we had only one board. But then uh, the satellite became a little bit complex. And it has, right now, it has like a seven boards or something like that. So we needed to test, the, we needed to do some integration tests in there. Like, uh, what happens if I change uh, a component in the satellite, a software component in the satellite? What happens with the rest? So we build like uh, an, uh, an infrastructure to, with JTAGs for the embedded nodes. And every time that you push a change there, uh, all the firmwares uh, were built and were uploaded to the, to the embedded node. The operating system uh, was Debian, of course. So the Debian package was installed in the root file system. And then we ran uh, like an integration test. In the beginning, it was just to see if everything was working. But yeah, at the end, it was something more thoughtful, more smart, I guess. And yeah, we. Well, <laughs> in that time, we, we started using GitLab. So uh, when Salsa was deployed in Debian, we thought, OK, we had like, a lot of experience uh, doing this. Uh, we, we walked the path through the, I don't know, we didn't know anything. And we had like, a really great CI, like uh, everyone in the company trust in the, in the results. Every time that someone pushes a uh, commit, they can see the, the feedback. They can see how the use set up the, the, the infrastructure. There, there is not, nothing behind uh, your test or your commit and, and your test. You can see the logs. You can see the, the command executed there. So you can uh, fix the test if the test is, is broken. but you can also fix your commit as well, for sure. Uh, yeah, so we think that continuous integration adds a lot of value, like uh, in Debian. It's, uh, well, we want to, we, we are going to that. We, we are trying to go to that. Uh, why? Because trusting in, in your CI pipeline, uh, Make, make it really easier to get, to get contributions from outside, not only from your core developers. Uh, everyone can push a commit to your project by forking the project first. And, and they can see the result. If the, 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 the commit breaks the package, uh, if it depends on the test, of course, that you have in your package. 
but uh, you have to make uh, your pipeline solid or, or uh, something that you want, you, you can trust, uh, and then you can accept or take contributions really easily, just taking a look to the changes and accept the merge, because you, you trust in your test. Um, yeah, li like I said before, uh, the first patch that you get, okay, you take the patch and you see the patch, and, oh, awesome, thank you, I am going to test it, and you run, I don't know, a lot of tests in your machine, and, and do, I don't know, whatever you need to, to make sure that your package is not broken, but then after a few years, you don't do that anymore. In my case, at least, I am talking about myself. <laughs> um, yeah, and, and the contributor as well can get feedback from the, from the patch, so yeah, I think that, that I already said that. Uh, well, yeah. And Iñaki. Well, but what is the Salsa CI team? What did we do? We developed and maintained a recipe for building and testing Debian packages. What we did, it's a recipe, just a file, which your project imports and allows it to build uh, and test the package on a generic way. We tried to do it compatible with most of the Debian packages and trying uh, always to keep it dry and kiss. This is not hiding the magic, everything is explicit, you can enter the, 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 the definition, you can read what it does, and if you have an, a special case, for example, you package has different way of testing or something, it's really easy to modify that, because the definition is really clean, or we're trying to do as clean as it possible. Uh, what are our goals? Well. As Tim said, the first and main goal is to detect problems before the package gets to the archive. Uh, we are trying, our main goal is to have the same services Debian infrastructure provide us, but inside GitLab say, uh, CI. Well, every time you push a change, we want all the current Debian tests that are run normally asynchronously on Debian infrastructure to be run on GitLab CI, and you can access the results, the log, on the shortest time possible. Also, uh, having a reproducible environment uh, to build and test your package, this way the, the environment, the, the, the place where, where the tests and the builds are run, they are defined on our, infra on the, our work, so anyone involved in the development of the project, I mean you, your contributors, the forks, can work on the same mm, environment you do, with the same uh, dependencies, with the same uh, versions of everything. Also, everyone can uh, see the recipe, as I said, but also the logs. So that's, uh, we think it's really important for the ramp up of the, the learning curve for the newcomers. If you have a package when I, well, I started uh, r a really short time ago, I don't have more than a year here, at first, it's a lot of black magic happening. You know, you run and uh, you push, and things happen on the background. Uh, with this, we want to to achieve having an explicit uh, recipe on how the package is built and how the package is tested, and uh, that people know that the developer uses the same uh, recipe that you are using. And that's to generate a bit of confidence on on the contributors. Well, but. What is the pipeline? This is what the pipeline looks like on Debian. It's quite wide here. Uh, uh, but here we can see two, um, two stages. Uh, the stage on the right, it's the build. We are now building with the Git build package. Right now it's the only uh, build we have, build method we have. But uh, we would like to have more, so contributions are welcome. Once the package is built on the first stage, all the, the, the files that result from that build are passed to the next stage where five tests are run in parallel. Uh, we are running auto-package tests, that is the same that ci.debian.net runs, which is a framework to run your, the, the package tests. Also, well, BLHC, it's build log hardener 
checks with checks for hardened flags. Um, also run by, by Debian. Uh, Lintian, the Lintian check. And reproducibility, which now we're using reprotest. That it's the only thing that it's not the same as Debian infrastructure does. Uh, because uh, reproducibility it's test uh, with, different har with different hardware and things. But we are working on that, and we would like to have the exact same things that Debian does. All this takes no more than eight minutes for a regular package, Python package. It means that when you push, all this is run, and in less than 10 minutes, you can have the feedback you need to know if the package works or not. Even less if it fails uh, the build or something before, but it's we think it's really, really fast. It's uh, important to note that every job is run on a clean and reproducible environment, as I said previously, that has the minimum required dependencies. Uh, when you build the package, the, the package, the build itself, it's done on an environment which only has the build dependencies of your package. It doesn't have anything else. So maybe if you forgot to add a build dependency that you happen to have because of dependency of another thing, uh, you will notice that kind of problems there. Uh, we would like to thank the Salsa admin job because thanks f to them, we are capable of run all this uh, in, the in parallel because of the infrastructure allows us to have a lot of runners at the same time. Uh, well, but how do I make my package CI? That simple. Uh, you only need to create a file, of course, under the Debian folder. Uh, we are using Salsa ci.yaml name, but that's just because it's not mandatory. Which the simplest definition is just to include those files. Those uh, include the, the definition and implementation of all the jobs I showed before. This also, uh, of course, can be modified. You can read, you can take a look at our readme. You can modify each job, or you can only use some of the jobs. If you don't want everything to run, you can just select some of them. Um, that's all. Well, uh, it's a little. You need to change a little the configuration, as I said, because uh, there we, uh, Salsa, um, GitLab looks for this file on dot GitLab CI dot YAML on the root of the project, and in Debian we need to put it under Debian. But we are trying to make that a default configuration somehow on upstream. Uh, our future plans. Well, we would like to build and test on multi-architectural. Uh, right now we are only doing AMD64 because that's where the runners are. But we would like to have more runners on different architectures. GitLab allows us to do, to install a runner natively on uh, an ARM board or something like that. So it would be possible. Also, we would like to test upstream changes in Debian. This means give upstream feedback about the package. If they make a change uh, they on upstream on GitHub, to have a way to trigger our pipeline, our building, and let them know if they broke or not the package. Everything is okay, or no, you broke Debian packaging, uh, and someone ha receives a mail to have a feedback that we think upstream might like to know about the Debian packaging itself. Uh, also, we'll, we're working on an idea to propose new releases automatically. This is uh, when upstream has a new release. There's a, a version, a new version on, on uh, the watch, uh, the repository you're watching. You can have a merge request opened on your project, and the pipeline will run, run, run automatically. So you know if the new upstream, if uh, importing the new upstream will run for Debian, will break the tests, will break something. So as the pipeline runs for every comet, if we bring uh, upstream changes, it will run against all your tests as you usually did, and you have uh, at least you know if it breaks everything or doesn't. Also, uh, we would like to increase coverage. Right now we have these five tests, but as Tim said, we, for example, the we don't have the, the FTP checks right now, so we would like to to have more tests and to increase the 
the things we can test on, a, on each comet. If you want to help, well, we need uh, more use cases. Right now, we have some packages running the, the pipeline, but we know most packages have some differences between them. So we would like everyone to let your package join the dark side. Right now, we have more than 330 packages, which is important. But we would like everyone to use our pipeline. We also need to improve the documentation. If you take a look at our readme, it's not the best thing. Uh, it's quite hard uh, for someone who doesn't know about C GitLab CI, maybe, to understand what you have to do. We're trying to work on that because it's really easy, but we are not good uh, <coughs> writers. So <laughs> if anyone uh, would like to, at least to discover what Salsa CI means and document what they did to make it work, that would help a lot. Uh, we would like everyone involved on this project. This, uh, the, our idea is to help everyone, so it's not something from us. We would like to, you to bring your projects, and if something doesn't work for you, to propose a, a change, uh, to report an issue. Well, I don't use GBP, I use another build method, so that's the feedback we want. Um, this is uh, well, our contributor so far. We have uh, like six months, and many people got involved into making patches or issues. Or this is the people who has commit already. So we are really thank to them. Well, uh, I would like to do a small demo. How oh, is yes, computer? So I picked a randomly tested <laughs> package <laughs> no, so I random. tried yesterday. Uh, and the idea is to show how easy it is to add the, the pipeline to your project. For example, I got this project. I'm going to fork it. This is not my account, so thank you, Tin. Yeah, everything. Uh, the first thing you need to do, as I previously said, is to change the CI path configuration. In particular, this project hasn't got uh, CI enabled. So the first thing you have to do is uh, to um, enable here CI uh, pipeline. But anyway, this comes on by, de by default, so you probably don't have to do it. Then um, on the CI configuration, CI CD. You have this custom CI com config path. Don't worry, this is all documented on the readme. But the idea here is you post the, the file you want, GitLab CI, we use Salsa CI. But it's the same. Enter to put the changes. And then you can add the pipeline, for example. <coughs> this, is set, this says set up, set up CI CD, but it's just because it offers you a template from GitLab. It's just creating a file on, on the path we previously configured. But so this is. And what you have to do is put this, which is on the readme. That's the text I put on the notes. And that's all. Commit. Oh, of course, not the master. This is just a test. Uh, you can commit to any branch. One of the features it has that uh, the pipeline is defined on the branch, not for the project. So different branches can have different pipelines. Everything is tracked on GitLab. So OK, I added this. And now you can go to here. This is CI CD pipelines. And it's running. That's all. Every time you push a commit to this branch, we'll start running. This is it's running build. When, uh, whenever it's finished building, it will start testing the package just built. And this is what it looks when it builds. Okay, it's now spawning the runner, but then it starts to, to build. Uh, where is the. Control F2. Control? F2. Hmm, F3, uh. sorry. No. Uh, um, thank you. Questions? 
we would love to have a lot of questions. Yeah, we have time for questions. Actually, so if you have questions, please line up at the microphone. Yeah, it was that, that clear? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. 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 Have you, th have you thought out uh, about uh, scheduling the pipelines regularly over time? I was looking into it and I think the only thing GitLab is allowed, uh, allows you to do is to say, I want to run this once each month and then it runs all jobs on the first of the month. Uh, is there a way to spread it out somehow? You can configure on your project, uh, run, run, run jobs yeah. and it has, you can run it uh, whenever you want. I mean. You, yeah. you say once in a month, just because, but you can run it, I don't know, every hour or every day. It has the cron syntax and you can okay, write but, it. But I think it then it's running uh, in my account, so I, I'm getting the notification. Yeah. Is there a way to get that to the team? Mm, no, I don't think so, because how GitLab handles it is that you are responsible for that and uh, it uses your account to trigger. So the pipeline has your, it's as if you triggered it, it has your permissions, your things. You can, you can create, um, I know it's not working, but you can create a, a pipeline inside your project that triggers your pipeline with another user that has the, the uh, team email, for example, with the user that has the, the, the just like a workaround. It's not the best. Yeah, but trigger, trigger the pipeline is just a uh, call with the token, just with the proper token. So you can do that. Another question. So I have a question. Um, so if I want to change something in this thing, do I have to copy paste the whole YAML from you and then change it? Or is there a way to override something? Or maybe you can show how, how that works. If I, for example, want to remove one of the tests, it's in my project, how would that work? Oh, there it is. It's oh. everything here, but you can, uh, for example, here we have a different uh, thing. We are running uh, repro tests without diff scope because it's need, it needs a lot of RAM and some big projects won't build because the runners has, have only one gigabyte of RAM. And that's how you change, for example, uh, a test. You okay. need to define a new job with the same name as the one we did and uh, you make it do anything you want. Perfect, thanks. So I'm old fashioned and I just upload tables with quilt patches and stuff to Debian's infrastructure. I don't really use Git if I can help it. and I don't have all my stuff in Salsa, but this sounds quite nice. So what's the easiest way to use this without having to use Git for everything? Or is that not really possible? <laughs> <laughs> I've got to get into this whole Git world and start building things with Git. And I, sh I don't really like it. I mean, I could. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a system and it works. But, you know, um, yeah. Can dgit do it for me? Because that sort of does things between one world and the other without me having to learn all that shit. As can, you, can you connect this to dgit's repository as well as Salsa's repository? Would that be a thing? O honestly, I don't know how <laughs> dgit wor works, so... No. But Probably. But I think the point is that if I, if you just upload things with dgit, it puts it in a git repo somewhere as well. Yeah. yeah exactly. And then, and then, maybe the infrastructure could run on that repository too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's possible. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh well. Anyway, that's that's the view of the world from like old-fashioned people who haven't really <laughs> done all this yet. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Fair There's enough. probably still quite a lot of us. I don't know. There's a, there's a command from Andrew. I just uh, wanted to, uh, to comment on the on your suggestion to uh, hook it onto the Git. Uh, well, it sort of uh, goes against the point of it because the point of CI, as well at least uh, as I see it, is to take uh, test your changes before they go to the archive, and to get in, in the Git you get things after. Well, in the process, uh, as they're getting uploaded, they're getting pushed to the Git. So it it's basically defies the point a bit. Well, it still, still provides some value, but much less value than it does when you actually use Salsa. Thank you. Uh, so if one of my tests uh, breaks in that runner, how, um, how do I get what exactly is broken? Uh, oh. 
Um, you can see the logs. It depends on what it's broken. I don't. Uh, what do you mean? If the test broke or it, your package is not compatible with the pipeline? If the test broke, if anything in the pipeline breaks, you will get the mail yes. with uh, the, the last piece of the log. Mm. So you can see it. Anyway, you can enter the pipeline and watch it and read the whole log. But there's no state of the um, of the runner or something that I can debug. Oh uh, no, the, there is a, a feature, um, but it is not enabled because the uh, salsa admins are waiting for killlab.com enabled it because it has some problems. But yeah, in the future you will be able to to debug and in the inside the, yeah. the runner. Uh, GitLab made a way for you to attach to the same uh, environment that is running, so you can see what happened. Uh -huh. But they didn't even enable it on GitLab.com, so Salsa admins are waiting. So there's a reason they didn't enable it. Okay, uh, thanks. But we will probably have it soon. It will be really helpful. Thank you. Well, anyone else? Any questions? We have still, yeah, yeah. please. Mm. Time. So can you say a little bit more about your runner infrastructure? How do they look like? Uh, what do they consist? How do they scale? And maybe also how can you clone them? I mean, if you're not on Salsa directly, so we have a lot of downstream package uh, work going on. So I could imagine that if we, we run the same thing for our downstream stuff in our infrastructure, of course, reusing the same thing that you are doing. Uh, well, honestly, we are not the Salsa admins, so, but you can see the code. They are using Ansible, I guess. Okay, uh, we are using what Salsa provides us. We don't have our uh, custom runners. We are okay. just using what Debian has, so anyone can use that. Uh, but you, you can do the same that he did on GitLab.com, mm -hmm. and it will okay. work fine. Okay. Or, or you can do that in the, your private instance. And it will you can work. register a runner, uh, a Docker runner, and it would do everything just as we did. That's the, the main Okay, so it's Docker-based already. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. it's Docker-based, yeah. Good. Thank you. Okay. Or container-based, because yeah. maybe the yeah. future is going to change. Yeah. Hey, uh, so I have two things. I, I wanted to ask about your timeline for different architectures. Well, in my case, I use those two packages, your size SCI already. But the thing is, most of them, my package breaks are in architectures which are not AMD64. So do you have a, like an idea when the salsa will supply uh, different architectures mm -hmm. or no, not an option at all? No, we, we would like to talk about that with uh, people already, like uh, Wookie or, or mm -hmm. someone that already have experience adding uh, coverage for different architectures to see if we can get machines dedicated to GitLab, to Salsa. Yeah, I guess so like some architectures like which are do not support like containers right now will probably not work, but ARM should work, I guess, yeah. with GitLab runners. That would be helpful. And then the other point was from your uh, future prospects uh, with um, like pulling from upstream projects and testing it. In my experience, like even simple projects do have like issues with uh, patches. Like if you have if my local patches, and my uh, packages rebuilt, uh, like the, the, all these patches need to be rebased on the news changes. And I, I don't know how you intend to do that. Well, Is but it yeah, it usually, you, you, usually you try to remove the patches from your package. So if, uh, if yeah, yeah, upstream pushes uh, commit and breaks your patches, yeah, you have to rebase them. Yeah, yeah but I have like, uh, with uh, closer with yeah, okay. Uh, especially like with packages like NetData, where we uh, have like um, some ideas what default values should be, and they don't apply to Debian operating mm -hmm. system. Then we have an issue that we have to supply patches, and that's why one of the points are like you, there needs to be like either like turn off like the patches for these uh, yeah. upstream builds, or actually we can talk about that later. I yeah, guess. we we, can, we should think about that. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, you can you can show the demo that you made earlier whether it worked actually okay. or not. Okay. No, no. <laughs> 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 well, uh, this is the this is the build job. 
uh, it finished. Uh, and for example, I can show you. This is the artifacts. Artifacts is wha how GitLab calls the files which result from a job and they are passed to the next one. So this is what we are having as an, art an artifact. It's all the, the, the files generated plus, for example, I'll the log from the build. If you, yeah, it well, I, I can read it here, but it's sometimes it's too big for GitLab to display it. So you, we pipe it to a file so you can analyze it if something goes wrong. And then, um, oh, everything went well. For example, at the package test, I'll show you everyone. This uh, has tests this package, Yay. so the, the test passed. Here you have uh, this is the name of the test. It passed. This is a summary. One, only one test, or one test. And in fact, well, auto package test defines the test, and you can run a lot of things. But yeah, as as you can see there, uh, there is uh, we are running just auto package test. It's the same output. It's not like uh, anything else. I mean, uh, well, VLHC. Uh, it's not C, so it's not it doesn't happen. Any, it doesn't happen anything. Uh, Lintian, uh, it shows well two warnings. Tags are already. Uh, few parts run okay, and you can, for example, just to point this out, you can see this took almost three minutes to run, which one minute and a half it's just uh, turning on the, the virtual machine for uh, the Git runner, so it's quite fast. And uh, this is repro tests, which the package is also reproducible. Wow. Yeah, and that's the, the package. Uh, hope you can use this and give us feedback. Hope it works. It gives it does some value to your project. Um, we are trying to make our lives easier. Only. <laughs> okay. So if there are no more questions, then let's thank the speakers again. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.